We are continuing with our course outline. So we see September 16th today. It's when assignment one is due. It's when we, we will introduce our next unit, which will be unit five, which is a fantasy composite creature that just like our landscape will be from at least five reference images, but probably more. But let's go to assignment one. So how do we get there? We go to the home page of the class and we can shortcut to it without having to go through all the units by just going right to assignments and right where we post it. So assignment one, this is where we post it. I'm going to open that in a new link and I'm going to show you just a quick professional example of people that use this in their professional work. Now you'll be doing midterm presentations with your group and you'll be doing final presentations where you bring to the class contemporary digital art right? that, that you enjoy based on a theme or just based on the artist. So that's where some of these resources are from, from different students' choices. So this is a, a photographer who's a digital photographer does concept work for mostly for publications and all of it's about compositing his own photos so photos like this full moon service it's taking many many layers of images and then compositing them into a fantasy setting so you can see there's his concept sketch just like we did a vision sketch and then he starts buying the props making them hiring friends and actors or models, finding, doing location scouting, and then starting to create his assets and then puts them all together. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And there are videos that talk about the whole process. And we are doing the same process, except we are not required to take our own photos. Yes. The which lines? So you can do command semicolon, because they're just guidelines to help. This other artist is a composite artist that really gets into it with other people's photos. And if you have interest, you can watch the whole video of the process. But basically, cutting things out carefully, arranging all these elements, just like the digital collage we're doing, and then arranging them, warping them, changing their lighting, dodging and burning, doing direct adjustments, all the things we're going to be learning. But what he does, which is kind of interesting, is take photos from settings and then turns them into these kind of giant characters. So it's partially illustration, partially digital collage. Oh, went the wrong way there. And sometimes that becomes big floating cities. This reminds me of the One Piece live action show. But this is all taken from other people's photographs. Right? And sometimes he'll do it with nature photographs, right? And then composite it all. So this, this bird made all out of different dried leaves and bark or this elephant made all out of uh, mountains and glaciers, or this seahorse made all out of plastic bags. So on and on and on. So what I'll do on that assignment sheets page is give you little extra resources to help kind of inspire why we're learning that skill. And these are often created by past students. So if we go to the post here, this goes right to the assignment. And I get to see where I was. Remember to make your images smaller so they fit under your name. So this was my required vision sketch. It's my bebop lollipop landscape. It has foreground, middle ground, background. I was inspired by this children's book, but that largely allows me to just interpret the way I want. And then this is where I got at the end of our first day of working. And this is a rough cut image reference, more than five, right? At least five to meet the requirements, stacked, I say stacked and stacked, on top of the vision sketch. So 
I, I should say stacked and placed, right? And sometimes I warp them, sometimes I rotate them. But this is what I have. So now I need to find that file. I have to go to my class folder, assignment one. Remember, it's good to keep your stuff organized. And I'm just going to double click it and it will open up in Photoshop. Now you want to make sure that you're logged in to the Adobe account, which you can just do by clicking on the help button once you're in Photoshop and it will show you what account is signed in. That's my account. All right, now for today, the first thing I do to make sure I meet the requirements is I check my image resolution. So image, image size. And in inches, I am 27 by 25 by 350. Why so much bigger than eight by 10? Well, because my actual image, to answer Kindle's question, I can hit command semicolon and I see my guides. My original image is in here. And that's the one that was like 11 by 14 inches. You can also see, it's nice in Photoshop, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, it will give you your, your physical dimensions and your resolution. So I am meeting the, the bare requirements of it being at least 8 by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. Once I'm done putting all, these to, all of these together, I will then crop it back down and save some memory. The next requirement is that I'm using at least five references. So let me look through my layers here. Yeah, I've got more than five. I've got a lot. So let's work with that. I'm actually going to make my layers a little bit bigger here so you can see. So I've got all of those. All of the ones with the eyeball turned on, those are useful. Now I've got my sketch kind of floating on top. But maybe I don't need that so much anymore. And then I have all my smart objects in case I need them. But I'm going to just go ahead and delete those out now because I've got everything placed. Especially if you're trying to save some memory, if you're on a, a machine without uh, the processing power of the, the studio Macs that are in the lab. I'm working on my laptop, so mine is not as powerful as yours. And then, of course, I have each of these elements and I can play with them individually and play with how to arrange them or stack them. And this one, I'm going to find like a line in there, an organic line to give me that foreground element I want. All right, so what do we do now? I'm going to hit Command S to update it, to save it. I'm going to turn off all these layers. And I'm going to start blending them in by working from the background. So this is my furthest back layer right here. And you can see how my sketch is showing underneath. But this is the next thing I want to blend in. Now what I can do is use my lasso, just my regular lasso tool, third tool down, and use it to cut out things like the top of the campus here. This is one of my own photos. But make sure you're erasing it from the right layer. Remember, you can only affect selections from a selected layer. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, this is how we blend organic textures, like sky to sky. The next thing I'm going to do is use a new tool that we haven't used before. And this tool is called the eraser tool. So it's about halfway down your tools. You're going to use the standard eraser. We're never going to use the background or magic eraser. The shortcut for it is E, if you ever need that. And then we're going to ch change the settings. So we want our eraser to be 100% opaque. But because we're blending organic texture into organic texture, we want it to be big and soft. So you set opacity there. Everything else, you leave it defaults. Then you go to your brush settings. And your brush settings, we're going to make large, like at least a 1,000 pixels. At least I am. And then hardness, I'm going to do zero. So what this gives me is something to obliterate hard edges. So all I do is swipe across with this very soft brush, and you'll see that it starts to blend, get rid of that hard edge, 
it will blend these organic textures together. It's something I call ghosting. But not like a ghosting of of not uh, showing up for class or not answering your professor. It's the kind of ghosting of just being very transparent. Right? Now, once I'm happy with getting rid of that hard edge, then I can go to lower opacities. But I have to be at 100% to start, and then I can start walking it back. So if I want those mountains kind of in the clouds, now I can take it back at, small, at lower opacities as I go and get a pretty believable gradation in the sky. All right, so that's just two layers blended together. Now I, I put my next layer on top. And before I blend this edge in and obliterate these edges, which I'll do the exact same way, wouldn't it make sense to try to get the, the color of the sky to be more similar to the sky that's behind it? So before we do what's called refined cutting, which is this kind of blending, we're going to do color corrections, color and lighting corrections. So now I know that this is my background. Even though it's made up of two images, it might just come from one image, right? And then I have this mountain that I want to match. So what I do is I go to image adjustments. And just like we did in exercise one, we go to levels. We used it in exercise one to clean up black and white. Here, we use it to clean up lights and darks across the histogram. So one thing I can do, and this is always how you should use levels, you start with the middle slider, this gray triangle, and you push it to the right. That pushes it darker, you push it to the left, and you see which one helps it fit this setting more. And I think pushing it just a little bit darker, not much, is helpful. Remember, this isn't color, this is lighting. If I feel these clouds are too bright, I can actually limit them with these bottom sliders. These are called limiters. So that the brightest white isn't 100% white. And that will show me all the texture in those clouds, which I want to keep to match what's behind. And then I can keep darkening the midtones, but I don't want to do it so much that I lose, even if I can match that value, I don't want to lose all this detail. So this is just where we start. So I'm going to go about to there. Okay, so what's the difference there? I'll show you in history. That's adjustment levels from that to that. Just a subtle little shift in, in lights and darks. Next, we're going to do image adjustments, color balance. This is my favorite one. You need to know three direct image adjustments. They are levels, color balance, and hue saturation. Those three will give you full control of your pixel color and lighting. So if I go to color balance now, this one's a little bit different. This is the temperature of the color. You see how there's a lot more intensity and there's a lot more blue in this image. There's more magenta in the background image. So I'm actually going to move it away from cyan and towards red a little bit. And you see how that starts? If I go too much, it's obviously it doesn't match. But I'm just going to shift these first in the midtones a little bit to each side. Then I'm going to take out some of that magenta, and I'm going to take out some of that blue, go more towards yellow, just a little. Kind of deadens the blues a little bit. Now I'm going to go to highlights, and I'm going to go a little bit towards magenta, just a bit. A little bit towards cyan. You just kind of see what you get, play around just a touch away from yellow and then I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to see what they do there so it looks like putting a little bit of yellow in the shadows is helpful on that mountainside and in the clouds maybe putting a little bit more cyan in there I'm looking at these kind of colors maybe a little bit more green in the shadows eh, no I'll go the other way all right so what was that difference that's what we did with levels. Now this is with color balance. So we took our original image. We image adjustment levels to fix the lighting. Image adjustment color balance to fix the color temperature. Last step. 
image adjustment hue saturation. 